How's it going everyone? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today I would like to talk about um, a very interesting class of objects that you find in modern day uh, quantum dynamics research. These objects allow you to make a lot of analytical progress on a number of extremely um, interesting problems and a bonus is that they're actually very easy uh, to understand and appreciate. These objects are known as dual unitary matrices. So as I said, these things are extremely easy to understand and they're extremely popular uh, in research today. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a unitary matrix and apply stricter uh, conditions on that matrix and it's going to restrict the total sort of parameter space uh, that we can use uh, to define a dual unitary matrix. This allows us uh, to simplify problems and make progress on problems that we otherwise would be stuck on. Okay, so let's state the most basic fact that we need for this story. First, what is a unitary matrix? A unitary matrix U is a matrix that if you take its uh, conjugate transpose, uh, you get its inverse matrix. And in particular, uh, U times what we call U dagger, its uh, uh, complex transpose or conjugate transpose, uh, is equal to U dagger U, uh, which is equal to the identity matrix. So in general, you'll be familiar with these objects or these matrices. For example, they describe uh, time evolution in quantum systems. Things like rotation matrices, um, etc. Uh, also are described by unitary matrices. Now that's a very uh, broad uh, and large class of matrices. Today what we're going to focus on is uh, unitary matrices that only act on two qubits at a time. And we can represent these objects with the following sort of uh, tensor notation. So in this diagram, we have um, our qubits being acted on by the legs of the unitary, which I've labeled um, I and K. So I and K are sort of our input legs and uh, J and L are our output legs. And we can understand this uh, tensor notation in terms of um, just writing elements um, of a matrix in the following way. Um, and we can also even simplify this further uh, rather than it being sort of an inner product. Uh, we can write it in index notation in the following way. So in this, uh, in, in this tensor diagram, we can think of our qubits sitting on a chain of qubits that perhaps is distributed um, horizontally. And therefore, uh, this horizontal direction is sort of our space direction. And then the up direction will be our time direction. You can think of applying the unitary as sort of a type of time evolution. So perhaps we call the application of one of these unitaries one time step. So before we move on, uh, especially if you're used to continuous time evolution systems or, you know, general quantum mechanical problems, what motivates only looking at a two qubit unitary? In the quantum uh, computing language, we would call this a quantum gate. One qubit and two qubit gates are the most common gates that you'll find in the quantum computing language. But this type of uh, context doesn't just apply uh, to the context of um, quantum computing, it can also apply to continuous time evolution. For example, if you're going to approximate the, uh, the dynamics uh, of a state, typically what you do is you do something called trotterization, or you can use more uh, advanced approximation schemes like uh, strength splitting. Uh, but basically what you do is you split up your time evolution um, into two-site gates or two-site uh, unitaries. So this type of setting is extremely common both on the quantum computing side and sort of the numerical simulation side um, uh, in quantum uh, dynamics. But it is quite useful to imagine this uh, in a very abstract way. Uh, this is the type of sort of abstraction that you might be thinking in if you're trying to work with quantum computers. Okay, so what does the condition of our matrix being unitary look like um, for this tensor diagram. So I'm going to draw uh, U dagger as a different shade. And then what we're going to do is we're going to attach the unitaries uh, with U on the bottom and U dagger on the top and connect their legs. Our unitary condition tells us that this tensor diagram needs to simplify to the identity, which we're just going to symbolize with straight lines going through. So it doesn't entangle the qubits. So next we're going to uh, introduce our 
um, condition of dual unitarity. And note this whole conversation can be uh, generalized to uh, qubits, you know, for systems with uh, uh, with more than uh, two, uh, two two levels. Uh, but for this video, we're just going to talk about uh, talk about qubits. So moving on, if you if you look at our tensor uh, diagram and you tilt your head maybe uh, to the right or to the left, it doesn't matter, what you'll notice is that the tensor diagram doesn't look all that different. And so the basic idea that we have here is that dual unitarity is demanding that the unitary matrix is uh, unitary in the time direction and it's also unitary in the space direction. And therefore there is some type of equivalence found in the space and time direction. So if we look at our matrix from the tilted uh, perspective, looking at it from left to right rather than bottom uh, to top, we'll call this new uh, matrix, this new unitary uh, called U tilde. And you can write down or fill its elements with the original unitary uh, by satisfying the following um, condition on its elements. Pictorially now, our unitary is also unitary if you contract um, the legs in the following way. And so this is taking, um, now we're connecting what we might call um, our uh, time qubits and we're connecting uh, down to the other side of, uh, of, the, of our unitary. Basically what this tells you now is then you get, a, uh, you get an identity in the opposite way. And this gives us unitarity in the space direction. So this is a uh, sort of a, a nice property and it allows you to simplify uh, sort of the dynamical picture of uh, circuit diagrams. And we'll definitely show um, examples of when this comes in handy uh, in the future, but for now, let's ask the question, okay, this is a nice property, and you can say out loud uh, that a unitary has it. Um, can we actually write down a general class of, um, of, uh, of two qubit uh, unitaries that has this property? And, and the answer is yes. So the most general uh, unitary that you can write down that acts on two qubits um, can be written in the following way. And so to be clear, uh, what I've just written is not a dual unitary uh, matrix. Uh, this is just a general unitary matrix. And so what we have here is that the little u's and the little v's are unitaries that act only on one qubit. And a quick mental exercise you can do for yourself is to convince yourself that one site uh, qubit unitaries are always dual unitary because it doesn't really matter which way you point their legs. So for simplicity, we can just look at the part that couples the two qubits together, sort of this center part. So the two qubit interaction part, basically. Inside the exponential, uh, we have a much more special structure. I've used the symbols X, Y, and Z to symbolize the standard poly matrices. And when you see something like XX, that means X on the first qubit times X on the second qubit, sort of a compact notation. And so inside of the exponential, you basically get something that looks like sort of a Heisenberg XYZ type interaction. And the condition of whether our unitary matrix is in fact dual unitary is going to come down to uh, choosing uh, a specific class of parameters for JX, JY, and JZ. So we're not going to solve this in full generality, but what we're going to do is we're going to set up the problem um, and we are then going to uh, basically demonstrate that the solution is in fact the solution. So it's not completely satisfying, but the full the full actual derivation uh, would probably be you know a much longer and more tedious video. So we're not gonna go into everything, but we're sort of going to you know, eyeball it, uh, basically. And so booting up a Mathematica notebook, uh, you can see that I have our identity, our X poly matrix, our Y poly matrix, and our Z poly matrix, and we make our interactions uh, with the um, Kronecker product, so this, the standard way. And because uh, Mathematica is a little annoying when it comes to complex conjugates, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fill the matrix uh, like this, and we're gonna ask it to simplify just because the things that come out are uh, a little annoying. Uh, and we're also going to do it for the complex conjugate of this. Um, so just adding the negative in front of the I there. And that's just going to avoid some, uh, some conjugate terms that show up in the computer algebra. Now, constructing a U tilde um, and U tilde deg is a little bit more complicated, but basically what I'm doing here um, is I'm just swapping uh, the indices by using the structure of the original uh, unitary. 
So you can pause and sort of verify for yourself that you believe this, or um, I mean, you, you can copy and paste this code if you want to. So what we're gonna get is we're gonna get uh, sort of big matrices that, you know, have some type of interaction between between all the parameters. And basically what we know is we know that U is already unitary. We need to understand when and why uh, U tilde is unitary. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply uh, U tilde by U tilde dag. And, and what we get is we get this following uh, big expression. So to verify that it is in fact unitary, you need to study the following problem. So you need to look at the first entry. That entry needs to be an identity, uh, right? Because this expression should you know, simplify it to the identity and so on. So, 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 so basically what's happening here is there's a bunch of problems uh, that you need to solve. And so this has been solved um, in full generality and you can convince yourself this, that this is in fact the solution uh, if you want to. But basically what you do is you take two of the coupling parameters um, so let's choose JX and JY and you set them to pi over four. And when you do that, that big matrix above uh, becomes the identity. So our dual unitary matrix or the part that is going to couple the two qubits uh, or have our interaction between the two qubits um, can be written in the following way. So all in all, out of all of our parameters, including the one site unitary, we've only fixed two of our parameters. So that is a large parameter space uh, to play with where you're always working with dual unitary matrices. So it is not the greatest price uh, to pay to get some extra sort of oomph into your um, uh, into your analytics. Perhaps one of the most common dual unitary matrices that we run into all the time is called uh, the swap gate. Um, and this is extremely common in quantum computing. So if you draw its tensor diagram, all it does is it swaps the, the, the qubits. Um, so you draw the tensor diagram in the uh, sort of following way. And just visually, you can tell that this is a dual unitary. It looks the same from from either direction. So typically constructing brickwork circuits uh, from dual unitary matrices gives lots of sort of very interesting uh, properties. So for example, um, these types of uh, these types of models can be shown to be uh, sort of maximally chaotic under certain uh, conditions analytically. So you might call them minimal models for chaos. Typically, uh, one's expectation is that uh, the models that you study that are quantum chaotic, uh, they're just sort of analytically intractable. Uh, but in fact, dual unitary matrices provides you a space where you can get a lot of analytical work done um, with the context of dual unitary matrices. And so for example, uh, the fact that they are uh, chaotic um, has been proven uh, analytically uh, by my current boss, Bruno uh, Bertini and, uh, and collaborators. So this is definitely a very active uh, area of research and a very powerful method uh, uh, to, to, to use. But I'm gonna end it here. Um, I hope you liked the video. And if you did, feel free to like, subscribe and leave a comment below.